are a part of this beautiful place. Beautiful? I mean, like, I'm not here. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Alright, so we got season one of Tales of the Walking Dead. We got episode one. I'll be breaking it down, reviewing it, talking about it, giving my thoughts on this episode. Um, so yeah, guys, thanks for joining. Thanks for coming back to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please be sure and do that. We are... Uh, we're growing rapidly, and it's thanks to you guys. Thanks for the comments. Guys, I really appreciate those. Um, I like to hear your opinions. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Um, comment, share, and activate your notification bell there. That way you can get my latest videos. And we are well on our way. So please subscribe. Devin Zane, help us hit a 1,000 subscribers. Guys, I appreciate all the support. Thanks for joining again. Let's dive right into this video. So we got Tales of the Walking Dead, Episode 1, Evie and Joe. We got Mr. Terry Crews and Olivia Munn starring in this episode. To me, a very entertaining episode. Like I said, I'll be breaking that down in this video, giving my thoughts. So we start off, uh, you see Terry Crews here, the back of his head, he's watching football there on his television you see the dog here we've seen the dog a couple times man does it make you nervous when you see animal introduction here like i really hope this dog lives right well stay tuned to find out on that see mr terry cruz here kind of chilling in the living room he's got electricity you see the dog there you see the helmet in the case. Under it it says Ohio State. So home of the Buckeyes. He must have played college football. And that's his helmet. Right above where it says Man Cave. So pretty cool little setup he's got going on here. You see a dry erase board here. It's kind of posted on his mirror. And it says days since the world blew the game. 402 so apparently 402 days into the apocalypse here kind of shows his setup um, a really cool bunker looks like he's got plenty of supplies there medications look like radio transmitters um, yeah he's got a pretty good setup going on here and as you can see a camera so apparently he uh, he's pretty high tech. This is pretty cool. And man, would I love to have these. If I was in an apocalypse, definitely have a camera pointing towards the outside. Definitely to be checking for walkers um, or people. You see him coming out of the bunker here, still in the PJs. Kind of taking the dog out there. Um, we get a... Uh, a nice shot here of the sunset. So we got Joe working out here. He's pumping the iron. Uh, kind of reminds me of Mercer, like I mentioned in one of my recent videos. Mercer was kind of just lifting weights. Um, so I don't know if that was a connection, but a cool little Easter egg. You see a mailbox here and the front yard. See the steps kind of leading out of the bunker here. So um, he's um, definitely underground, definitely safe. See him and the dog. So he's just kind of hanging out here, letting the dog uh, go to the bathroom. It looks like on uh, the base of a tree. He might have cut off. And it's just kind of showing his daily routine here as he wakes up every morning, like I said, with the same pajama pants on. I guess he loves them. And you see him waking up again. Like I said, kind of going through his daily routine here. And yeah, guys, I don't know what it is, but I can't take my mind off those damn pajama pants. Got him watching football again. You see the bowl in his hand. Apparently he has plenty of food as well in the bunker. 
kind of interacting with the dog a little bit, watching the game. You can see the stairwell there in the bunker. Yeah, he's he's kind of showing how um yeah how he's living. You know, it, there he's doing a puzzle. There's a shot of him and the dog, um, obviously wanting some attention. And I am t tired of calling this dog dog, so um, I'm actually going to stop recording right this second and look up the dog's name, just so you guys know. Okay, looked it up. Thanks, Google. You're my hero. So, you see him carrying Gilly, that's the dog's name, um, out of the bunker. So, uh, apparently, uh, Gilly is a pretty old dog. Um, he had an accident. He's carrying it outside. Planned on letting the dog use the restroom, and you see um, the dog. There I go again. You see Gilly there. Um, hey, the dog, the dog deserves credit. It's a member of the cast, you know? Gilly. You see, you see Gilly there kind of sensing something, and... Um, we hear walkers kind of growling in the background. And apparently where he takes the dog to uh, use the restroom, he um, has a surrounding kind of uh, sort of a trap here to keep the walkers away. Really cool. You see the walkers approaching here. You got Joe and dog right in the middle of kind of all those spikes. Gilly actually gets to barking a lot, so um, Gilly's bark is kind of attracting the walkers. And we get this scene. You see Gilly kind of flying up, attacking a walker here. And I know this image is kind of dark, but uh, yeah. Yep, Gilly dies right off the bat. That scene really bummed me out. And as you can tell, it's it's really bumming Joe out as well. So we switch to the shot outside. See, he's got the shovel in his hand. He's burying Gilly. Lost his dog. He's been with Gilly a very long time, apparently. Switch back into the morning routine. Except this time, he don't have his best friend right there next to him. R.I.P. Gilly. And he's very traumatized, you know. Like I said, he's he's probably been with his dog for years. Um, he gets kind of mad um, starts throwing his puzzles around the room throwing books and he picks up some papers that he has in the bunker that you'll see later um, he's communicating with a uh, different person which is a female you see him going through all of the papers here on the ground. Just kind of scattered out everywhere. So there's some sort of communication. I don't know if it's through. Um, I don't I don't know how this is. Uh, how these are dropped off. If maybe the mailbox was the key to where these letters come from. Or how they are communicating. But they do know each other and they have handles. And when I say handles, I mean names that they call each other by. So on this printed paper, some sort of telegram, I guess you would call it. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I apologize, but he's definitely communicating with someone. And you hear a female's voice in the background as he looks at these, as these um, papers. Uh, the lady actually said, let's meet IRL, which is in real life, of course. And yeah, he's just kind of going at it, looking at maps and papers, as you see here. Here's a map that he's looking at. It's got a 734 question mark. Not sure what that's about. Um, you see Lake Huron there, um, right on the east side of Michigan here. Really cool shot from above. He's got the map in his hand. The paper's all scattered all over the room. And apparently he's had enough. You see him taking the case off the helmet there. He's packing up all of his gear. Getting everything together. 
got the helmet in his hand. You see him kind of in the hallway of the bunker. He's got on a pretty big pack. Um, and then we just see him kind of exiting the bunker. You see he's got some pretty badass weapons that he's laying here on the front of a bike. Got the map right in front of him there as he pastes it right there on the gas tank of the bike. So he's, uh, looks like he's cranking this thing up. He hasn't been out in a while, apparently. He's had everything he's, you know, he's needed. So this, um, this appears to be like he hasn't really got out in a long time. See a picture of him and Gilly. He's got tape to his motorcycle mirror, which you'll see in a minute more about the motorcycle. Putting on his helmet. He's got a radio there, so he's ready to ride. And yeah, guys, he's got a really cool bike. It's, uh, I don't know what you call these, but there's room for another passenger on the side as it has three or four wheels. Either way, it's a, it's a really badass setup. As you can see here, he's kind of looking around, driving down the road. Almost says he hasn't been out in a while you see him passing the car there thought this was a pretty cool shot as they kind of give you some insight into the apocalypse he's looking around and uh, a lot of debris a lot of junk just kind of all over the roads as he's driving here it turns night time we switch to this scene you see the spikes sticking up out of the ground here he actually drives over the spikes, punctures the tires, and yeah, he's pretty mad. He's pretty mad about it. So you see him walking here, and they're emphasizing on the feet. So yeah, you're thinking trap right off the bat, right? And it is a trap. Um, some sort of rainbow netting. If you step in the right place, it's kind of like a hammock, but almost a net that you can't get out of so he's wrapped up pretty tightly in this thing and he's just kinda hanging from a tree and apparently this thing has bells on it you see someone walking up here holding a pair of shears I'm headed towards Joe and that's when we get the reveal of Evie played by Olivia Munn as you see her here the walker getting dangerously close to the net and to Joe as well. So she ends up stabbing the walker in the head and the walker falls down here sparing Joe's life. So good thing she showed up when she did. See Joe's wrapped up pretty good in some sort of rainbow netting like I said. Some sort of trap. You see Evie there. And she was looking for a knife, um, some sort. So uh, it's pretty cool. She found a switchblade. She makes Terry Crews put on some handcuffs before she would even let him down or cut the net. So he does that. And then we switch over to where they are here. We see a shot of these two here in what appears to be her home that she is residing in here as well pretty nice little setup and Evie's character just comes off very funny she's very energetic very cheerful so a cheerful introduction to Evie here you see she's got Joe you see the duct tape around him she's got him handcuffed as well and he's kinda sitting here she's mostly doing all the talking Talking about living a vegan lifestyle. Um, talking about plants that she grows. Yep, including marijuana. Talks about how she's a connoisseur. Um, so yeah, you see Joe here pretty pissed off. She picks up some sort of stuffed animal here. A little bit more conversation between these two. She, very energetic, very funny. Um... You can definitely get a couple laughs out of this episode as the comedy was pretty on point. 
So Joe's still pretty angry here, giving her a hard time. It shows her picking up a pendant necklace here. She actually puts that necklace on Joe. He's tied up. He's mad. She goes on to talk about how it will help with the negative energy that she's feeling. And so, yeah, she's just kind of goofy, kind of crazy, talking about the necklace. She's also mentioning some paintings and pictures, which might be her destination. As she wants to take the bike, he said you can't because it has a kill switch. And she will never find out where it is. So she said, well, then you're going to help me. So we jump to the next morning. They're on their way. You see Terry, Joe here. Keep wanting to call him Terry Cruz. He's handcuffed. Um, been handcuffed all night. So she lets him take off the handcuffs because he's going to be driving. You see she's got her gun pointed at him she's looking at a map giving him directions on where they are going and he kind of starts moving around a little bit so she still has the gun on him pointed straight at him said hands on the hands on the handlebars and you see them here they got the helmets on they're ready to go She's got a gun to him, apparently demanding to take her somewhere towards these pictures or paintings. And it just kind of shows them riding off into the sunset here. You see the two riding the motorcycle there. Um, it's pretty cool as they have the postcards pop up and fade in and out on the screen. We get some more shots. You see them riding there, and uh, pretty cool imagery um, as they're kind of fading in, you know, where they're at. Get a really cool shot of this bridge here. Greetings from Springfield, Ohio. And it kind of makes you wonder, kind of made me think, uh, Ohio was actually the place where the Civil Republic military, the CRM from the Walking Dead universe is. So something to think about there. Are they in CRM territory? Um, definitely not revealed in the show, but um, could be close. You see Joe pulling over the bike there. She's asking, what are you doing? He says, nature calls. He's asking her to take the handcuffs so he can go use the bathroom. And apparently, no. She's got her gun out. She's like, you're going to have to deal with it, buddy. You see Joe doing his thing there. She's in the background. She's doing quite a bit of talking, too. Just kind of chatting away. Like I said, her character is very cheerful. He looks behind him. He's using the restroom. He's like, can I get a little bit of privacy here so I can concentrate? And yeah, like I said, this episode's got a little bit of comedy to it. Um, you see Terry Crews getting back on the bike. He's got his radio right there in his pack on the front of him. He's putting his earphones on. You get this look from Evie here. You see Terry Crews here, which I want to keep calling Terry. But his name is Joe. And Evie here, he's rocking out. He's got Charlie Pride playing in his headphones there. And yeah, she just starts singing. Singing with him. So they're cruising. They're singing. And we get a shot of their nighttime base camp here. Kind of set up a fire. See the motorcycle to the right. See Joe there. He's still handcuffed. Sitting with his back against the tree. She starts going through his pack. As you see, she pulls out a book there. Calls her a nosy bitch. And yeah, that's kind of how that scene goes. And she ends up asking, who are you? And um, he's like, none of your business. So Terry kind of lays down. He's next to the fire there. He's next to a tree. 
she ends up uh, actually putting a cover over him and yeah tucking him in I guess here we are the next morning you see they're traveling through Ohio you can see the Bowling Green logo there I thought the postcards definitely threw some interesting um, cinematography here uh, as you can see the the postcards fading in and out get one more postcard there that says greetings from Ohio so yeah it definitely makes me wonder if if they are close to the CRM um, yeah it made me think about it a couple times you see they pulled over here into the sunset and Joe kind of apologizes here to Evie as these two conversate and you got Evie pretty much talking to him you know telling him about the world look around kind of kind of that sort of thing now we see him drop camp again here you see Terry there they got a fire going and noises start coming from the woods you see a terrified look on Joe's face there as they are taking a look around uh, they definitely know the walkers are coming and there's quite a few of them um, he asked her to take the handcuffs off of him and uh, she doesn't but she does toss him a, a pretty badass weapon some of these images are kind of dark um, they were dark as I was watching them as well so you can kind of see the walkers there in the background in the woods so this is where we see the walkers come in um, or as Evie would like to call them, toe tags. That's definitely a new one that we heard in this episode, toe tags. Heard a lot of names for the walkers, um, biters, rotters. <laughs> so uh, this is a new one. Anyway, not to peer off on what you would call a walker or uh, what anybody would. But anyway, there, you see them fighting here. There's quite a few walkers around them see terry kind of go at it um he's being pretty badass himself they're fighting off these walkers he sees one with a hole uh right about where your heart would be you see this really cool creepy looking walker he's got a hole in his in his chest there uh you can see right through him joe is kind of hesitating on then killing this walker and then uh evie uh, kind of holler at him like what the hell are you doing but anyway he ends up putting this walker down he mentions the walker not having a heart he's like someone took his heart and uh, evie was like well i hope it was after he turned and so yeah they both took down multiple walkers you see him he'd be pretty badass were you in martial arts and she did uh, have some pretty cool kicks and roundhouses. Um, so she definitely got some ninja skills here. Back to the episode. Joe asked Evie if she could drive. You see Evie at the wheel here. You got Joe hanging out on the passenger side. More postcard images fade in and out. You see Ann Arbor, Michigan here. You see Evie driving the motorcycle. At this point, I think they're both definitely getting along pretty well. Um, they're singing together. Um, you see another postcard, Flint. Um, yeah, so, so far these two have been great together. Apparently they finally make it to Michigan here. So they find an abandoned warehouse here. Very large building structure. Um, indoors got a fire going Joe finds a bottle of whiskey he offers Evie some she says she doesn't drink so uh, he's gonna have the whole bottle to himself here and then we get a little bit of more dialogue and conversation between these two he asked Evie do you like orange juice she said from what I can remember he Pulls out some orange juice powder. Gives it to Evie. This is when they have a pretty lengthy conversation about life. About love. 
she's going through his books here. Um, actually pulls out the book. He gets mad at her. Calls her a nosy bitch. And yeah, so she goes on to grab this book. Opens it, starts reading it. A lot of poetry. And a lot of personal things. A lot of things that are personal to Joe here. And yeah, they pretty much made up for it. You see him giving a toast here. We move on to the next day. And as you look at the buildings in the background, guys, if these look familiar, this is the same set, I believe. I'm 99% sure this is Terminus. You see Joe getting on his bike here. He's getting ready to roll out. She calls him back in, so he's headed back in. Like I said, you can clearly see the outline of the building. Definitely Terminus. Definitely think this was the same set. So we get a shot of Joe walking back in the building here. And yeah, guys, just, just can't help think uh, remembering this set. Uh, so pretty cool that they said in Terminus. Not that it means anything in this episode at all. And they are talking to each other. She's reading through the book. Um, the journal, the poetry, the book. Uh, apparently it's a writing from the lady that Joe was communicating with through the papers we saw in the beginning. Evie's reading through the book, kind of mentioning things here. And yeah, Joe kind of walking up to him. They're having a pretty personal conversation here. And I believe in Evie mentions that she could help him find her. So uh, pretty surprised look on his face there. Uh, he's, saying, he's saying I know where she's at. She's about 12 hours from where we're at right now. Even goes on to say I got a picture of her. So yeah they made up their decision. They're going to try to find this woman here. We see a goat in the doorway as the two turn around. They're wondering like what the hell. So we see a goat here. Walking towards this tie, tied up goat. Um, see her looking there. There is a sign on the goat's neck there. You see it's hanging from his neck. It says thanks for the bike. You see off in the distance someone driving away super fast. Taking the bike. Taking all the gear. Taking everything. Everything they have. Terry Crews ends up grabbing the gun from her very quickly, taking off. See him coming around the corner here, and like I said, you can't help but notice Terminus in the background, or at least the set of Terminus. Um, so pretty cool there. So he's uh, running after this bike, he's got the gun, and as he gets ready to shoot here, he actually pulls the trigger, and the gun is not loaded. Never had bullets in it at all. You see the motorcycle got away, whoever took it, not sure who that was, but they got away with pretty much everything that they have and, and own. He's looking at the gun here, he's thinking you had me the whole time, you didn't have any ammo. And he's super pissed about losing his bike, losing everything. She mentioned she has some things on there as well that mean a lot to her, so they pretty much lost everything. They got a goat. I guess you see these two walk and she's got the goat in her hand he's talking about what are we gonna do now what are we gonna eat um, <laughs> kinda peeks over at the goat and she's pretty much like you ought to be ashamed of yourself L look at this goat's face look look at this goat's face anyway a little bit more comedy from these two as as it went throughout the episode as well and Joe just decides to go ahead and throw down the gun. Um, you see Evie and the goat there on the right. He's walking away. He's headed down the uh, tracks here, which are train tracks. So is this a callback to Terminus train tracks and the Terminus building? Um, more than likely, they were just using it for a set. But it's pretty cool to see it again. 
at, even in the Walking Dead universe. We jump on over to a scene. Joe's off on his own. He's looking at this map. He's definitely studying it. And you see him stumble upon a camera here that's tied to a tree. Clearly for surveillance since the camera is so high. Um, Joe, believing that he found this woman, is actually jumping up and down um, at the camera. He's kind of hollering, it's me, it's me. You see the walkers approaching there. So he's uh, he's in over his head as he has multiple walkers headed towards him. You see right there to the right of his head, you see a, the, uh, the ground kind of opening, which is the doors to the bunker. As he's hollering at the camera, he soon realizes that the doors opened. Um, you see him headed for the, for the uh, bunker here. And he drops down in the bunker. You see the walker surrounding the top there of the doors of the bunker. He actually falls down. Um, after he opens the bunker, he kind of just falls down, hurts his leg a little bit. You see him limping off into this really, really cool bunker. Um, you see the lights there on the walls. And as he goes down these steps, you can see what appears to be some legs there of a different person. And you can see by the look in his eyes that he knows that he found this woman. And we get this new character, and her name is Sandra in this episode, as you see him looking down there. They're both surprised. Um... She just looks overwhelmed. She goes on to tell him you must be hungry. You see him stumbling. She's helping her uh, through the bunker here. And it kind of flashes back to Evie as she's walking through the woods. Still got the goat. You see a house or a small cabin in the distance there. And she opens the doors. You see the painting on the wall there. She's um, pretty much found what she's been looking for as far as where she was headed. She sees the multiple paintings, which are horrible paintings. Um, they're pretty, pretty gruesome looking as well. You see Evie sitting here looking through the paintings and um, yeah, she's just kind of wondering. And she gets to this painting. Um, must must be herself, I would guess. Um, still don't know the whole story behind, you know, Evie and these paintings and drawings and what it's connected to. So I apologize for that. But you see, she's looking at this painting of this woman, and she's smiling, almost as as if she has gotten some sort of closure in. Um, and what she's trying to do here, what she's trying to find, or what she found. We go back to the uh, underground bunker. The super cool underground bu bunker. You see a brownie cake there on a plate. And uh, he said, this is it? He pretty much is like, this, this is what you're giving me? And she, uh, Sandra goes on to say, I'm no Betty Crocker, which was kind of funny. You see Joe sitting here gnawing on this brownie. Uh, pretty nice bunker, like I said. You see the lights going above the ceiling there. Uh, definitely has electricity. Definitely has the whole setup. And they start having a conversation as they are sitting there. Joe's eating the brownie. They're kind of sharing stories, kind of kind of talking about things. Uh, definitely excited to see each other. Sandra tells Joe she's got to go freshen up as he's still eating on this brownie here. And then we get these weird hallucination scenes. Uh, you can see the lips there. She's putting on lipstick. He is um, definitely something going on with him. 
So the whole time this is going through his head, she's in the other room. She's telling him to think about good things, think about football. He's sitting here, you see, he's kind of dazed out, um, calling Sandra. This is from Joe's point of view here. You see, he's uh, got blurriness in his eyes. Um, looks like he's struggling a little bit on his coordination. You see her there, kind of blurred out. He's kind of looking at her. He's hearing things. He's kind of like, what the hell is going on here? Get another shot of Sandra here. Um, looking a little bit more creepy. So, yeah, at this point she's holding a knife right there in her hand, as you can see. She's asking, why are you here? And, um, yeah, like I said, looking pretty creepy. Even kind of gets right up in his face, kind of yells at him, what are you doing here? She's kind of lost her mind. She's gone nuts. She actually had the blade in her hand and cut him on the throat. Being even more angry, she cuts him on the throat again. And yeah, just pretty crazy sequence altogether. She's just kind of yelling at him, going off on him, sliced his neck a couple times. Almost thought he was dead after she sliced him that first time. But um, yeah, just a couple neck slices, really. You see a shot of Evie here and the goat as they're out in the woods. At this point, um, Joe is pretty much hallucinating. He's kind of tripping out on the uh, the marijuana laced brownie, so he's kind of out of his element. She's still kind of talking to him. Um, yeah, pretty pretty weird sequence we had here. You can see the two slices on his neck there. He's kind of bleeding. Um, Still hallucinating a little bit, wondering what's going on. You see Miss Wicked here again in this shot. And apparently she was into collecting watches of uh, either men or people that she has met or have killed. You see her taking off his watch here. And yeah, pretty much just goes and grabs a butcher knife and just comes running at Joe like a crazy mad woman here. This pendant that you see here that was around Joe's neck um, that Evie had put around her. She actually tried to stab him and this pendant actually stopped the blade from going into his chest. You see that they're starting to get a little bit hostile and we hear a beeping noise some sort of um, notification siren that um, someone is near the bunker as she is pretty well equipped herself in this nice bunker um, see she's got the cam there um, so definitely got the security you can see in the image that's Evie walking up so while this lady's pretty much still tripping out, she goes back to the mirror. Yeah, just just kind of weird sequence here. You see Evie there um, with the goat um, coming up upon the bunker. You see Sandra and Joe here. You see Joe on the floor. He's pretty much fully tied up. He's got a gag in his mouth. He's got tie straps around his wrist. Um, so she's got him secured to the pole as she goes to investigate. She opens the bunker doors there, as you see, popping out. You see Evie here and the goat and Sandra having a conversation, telling her to come on in. Like I said, she's got Joe. She's got a gag in his mouth there you see he's tied up with tie straps as we see Sandra inviting Evie into the bunker 
And Sandra actually hands Evie the same thing she handed Joe, which was a brownie and apparently laced. These two kind of conversating, talking about things um, to the reveal of Joe and who Evie is looking for. And at first, Sandra actually said that she had never heard of him. She asked Evie, well, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Evie was pretty much like, hey, you should warn someone before you give them an edible. Um, Because apparently, she definitely knows that uh, that's not just a regular brownie. And we get this shot of Sandra... She's holding a very, very large knife. Um, You see Evie there, still conversating with her a little bit. That's when Sandra just goes completely nuts. You see Evie there. She's getting ready, showing off her ninja skills, actually knocking Sandra backwards. She quickly kind of runs out. She sees, uh, you see we have the goat there. Sandra on the floor she starts to actually cut the goat loose before she hears Joe so uh, she starts rushing towards him and she opens up the door she sees that Joe's all tied up he's got a gag in his mouth and then just out of nowhere here comes this crazy lady Sandra headed down the hallway looking nuts and Mr. Joe with a great shot throwing a butcher knife directly into her chest this was a really cool kill scene definitely enjoyed it and you see these two here talking Joe's freed at this point Sandra is dead are they going to stay in the bunker are they going to leave See Sandra lying there with the floor with the butcher knife stuck out of her. We still got the goat, guys. So no harm on the goat. The goat's going to survive. We're all good on the goat. We can't have two animal deaths in one episode, that's for sure. And you see, I don't know why they didn't, I don't know why they didn't stab her in the head and just kill her. They uh, decided to start to leave this bunker you see the walker Sandra there the butcher knife sticking out of her chest she was actually a pretty creepy looking walker you see um, Evie pushing up Joe there um, struggling a little bit they finally make it out you see Sandra grabbing Evie's boot there She ends up getting free. They close the doors. So they are good. You see Terry here kind of cracking up a little bit. He's got a grin on his face. He's laughing. He's smiling. He's out of his element. I guess he's a little bit um, high. And like I said, you get quite a bit of comedy throughout this episode. So he's like... uh, In this scene, he's kind of like, why am I so hungry? What is going on here? I mean, he's tripping out. He's, uh, yeah, yeah, he's there. We get this next shot. We see the goat. There's Olivia's hand there. You see Olivia there waking up um, on the left side of that bridge. And you guys tell me, is that the same bridge we saw Lydia and the Whisperer in in season nine, because it sure looks like the same bridge. Could it be another set location? It just looks like the same bridge to me. It's like they used a couple different sets from The Walking Dead, which I thought was really cool. The first one, Terminus, and now this bridge I believe we've seen before. Anyway, she's looking for Joe. She just woke up. You got Joe approaching her here saying, you didn't think I was going to leave you, did you? So these two finally share a hug here, as we see, as we near the end of the episode. She starts trying to talk to inspire him, 
Look what you have at this beautiful place. He looks around thinking beautiful. And that's kind of the part we saw in the trailer that was pretty funny. She she's saying not here. And yeah, guys, uh, we're almost wrapped up. You see the scene here, um, looks like of a of a bridge that they came out of there and the road. I was just happy that these three definitely survived the episode. Um, was worried about the goat there towards the end, but hey, it is what it is. And that's pretty much how the episode ends, guys. Um, you got them walking out into the sunset. Um, you got the goat, Evie and Joe. I'm very surprised they both survived the episode. I'm super glad they did. I didn't want to lose either one of these characters. Um, like I said, this might be their only episode. It, it's a one episode deal with Tales of the Walking Dead, six different tells. So I'm thinking um, they're walking off into the sunset here and, and they're fine. We end with a picture of this sign. It says, welcome back. You see there at the top, it says the river flooded my house. So that's how it ends, guys. That's the last we get of this episode. I uh, thought it was great. Yep, yeah, definitely enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure and like the video if you like it, guys. Share it with your friends. Going to be having a lot coming up on the channel besides the Walking Dead universe. More movies, more reactions, TV series. So we'll jump into the, some things when we're not talking about the Walking Dead for sure. We'll jump into some other avenues, um, TV series. But, um, yeah, guys, definitely stay tuned to the channel. And, like I said, guys, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. That helps the channel so much. We are on our way to 1,000 subscribers, and we're getting closer day by day. Like the video, like I said, if you like it. Leave a comment. Uh, enable notifications so you can get my latest videos. As always, thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for my next video. We're going to be doing Tales of the Walking Dead Episode 2. That looks really interesting, so can't wait to uh, have that video out for you guys. In the meantime, might have another video out um, exploring different avenues. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.